Hey there, it's Lauren, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over some trending topics in the book publishing space. So if you're wanting to get published, if you're wanting to learn more, if you're wanting to just kind of keep up with what's happening, uh, look no further than this video. I do have a quick disclaimer though, before we get started, which is that I'm gonna be covering a lot of topics in a very short amount of time. So some of the reports or headlines that I share might require a bit more context. So I've done my absolute best to find free accessible resources for each of these topics that I'm gonna be covering that we're gonna, that are gonna be linked in the description down below. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. The first is that there's a new AI narration program happening within the Audible space. Uh, there is a key platform known as ACX that a lot of self-publishing authors use to distribute and sell their audiobooks through Audible. And these audiobook narrators who work with clients through ACX, this platform, uh, can have their voices replicated by AI to not only audition for jobs, but to also narrate entire audiobooks. And I feel like I've heard something about this before in the recent past. This is currently being being beta tested and it is invite only, so it's nothing that's super widespread. Um, but I do have a quote that I pulled from the resource that I got this from, which is a paid newsletter that um, I pay for. So I, I can't share the article with the exact wording, but I'll do my best to, to find something that's a good substitute for it. Using production tools, narrators can edit pronunciation and pacing, ensuring their voice replica productions maintain high quality standards. Now you might be thinking, what if AI exploits these narrators and starts using their voice for all kinds of other projects? Don't worry, Audible has already said that it will not separately use a narrator's voice replica for any other projects or content without their approval. So if you wanna learn more about this, I've got a link uh, covering this in the description below. The second headline that's making waves is that self-publishing authors are starting to attract the attention of some large publishers and even agents. This conversation is one that I've seen orbit around Matthew Bounds. He's just one person that I'm gonna zero in on. Uh, and he is the author of the recently published book, Keep It Simple, Y'all, Easy Dinners from Your Barefoot Neighbor, which is a great title, by the way. I would, I would buy the book just for the title. He launched his book this past July and has attracted the interest of not one, but two publishers, including Penguin Random House and even some agents. Uh, and to my knowledge, I don't know if he's accepted any deals yet, but I do know that he was having conversations conversations and negotiations with a with I think Penguin Random House and he decided to have someone review the contract before signing with anyone. So I think that's a really great thing to do. Authors consistently appearing in high uh, Amazon rankings or elsewhere could hear from agents who can help facilitate rights deals when they say that they're appearing in high ranking Amazon categories. I'm assuming that these are very broad categories, right? Because these broader ca categories like stress management, for example, I don't know, those, th those are gonna have a lot more titles in that category versus maybe mindful stress management for for teenagers and adolescents. That's a much more niche title. So I, I'm assuming that they're talking high rankings for broad titles. Some literary agents can now actually specialize in working with self-published authors. So it seems like this is very gradually kind of becoming a thing. I think it's a very safe way to invest time, money, and energy into books that already have interest. I'm almost kind of thinking of it as um, almost kind of like a trial mode where it's like, oh, self-publish it yourself if it seems like it's performing performing well and there's a lot of interest in it then you know we you know there might be some interest in publishing it or representing it or something so it's definitely a very new and interesting approach i don't feel one way or the other on it i think i'm more interested in getting more information before i place my own opinions out there, um, but a lot of agents still receive a lot of their clients through submissions or referrals. But Savannah Greenwell of Two Daisy Media said that 10% of her clients uh, are both self-published and traditionally published, but believes that this percentage will increase. So more information on that in the description below. The third and final large headline that I have in the news before diving into some of the smaller ones is figuring out where the heck all of these big successful debut novelists and authors come from. I have certainly wondered that myself. I do think that there is a bit of jealousy around seeing debut authors getting the flashy six-figure book deal and you know, you're kind of on your own trying to make it happen for yourself. I absolutely relate to that feeling. So I've wondered this myself. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. According to this newsletter that I got this information from, which is The Hot Sheet by Jane Friedman, amazing resource, 60 bucks a year in case you wanna sign up for yourself. Based on the information that I read, the good news is that you don't need to be an online superstar to sell your books, but the bad news is that it definitely helps to know the right people. And I feel like I have definitely mentioned this before in past videos. I have compared the publishing industry to being like a really small neighborhood where everyone kind of knows each other. And if you know someone who lives there and has lived there for a long time, 
time, it's easier to kind of be introduced, right? So it's, it's a very interesting uh, community for sure. So this particular analysis looked at 131 book deals reported to Publishers Marketplace, a very reputable website uh, and resource for all kinds of industry people as well as authors between April and August of 2024. So this is not representative of all book deals that happen. This is just a very particular pool from a very particular point in time. It's just meant to be a conversation starter and kind of give you an idea of how some stuff works. So anyway, these 131 book deals generally fell into these seven categories. The first one being the literary and university community. Uh, this makes up about 37.8, about 38% of book deals. These are people who get MFAs from reputable, you know, creative writing programs. This includes like professors and teachers, which I don't really feel like the statistic helps combat the question of, do I need an MFA to get published? My answer would be no. There's definitely more than one way to make two numbers add up to 10. But according to the statistic, and the numbers don't lie, they just need context, you know, 38% of people within this particular time frame with this particular pool of data that was collected did get a book deal through their, um, you know, university connections. And an example of someone who did succeed in this area was Emily Ruskovich. Uh, she published an award-winning book called Idaho that was published in 2017, I believe. Uh, and she graduated from the Iowa Writers Workshop. I actually made a video semi-recently about um, three authors, big, mid-list, and smaller, um, and what they did to be so successful in their authorship. Definitely check that out if you're interested. I'm gonna put a little tag up here somewhere. The second category is 16.5%, which comes from the journalist and media community. This is people who write for magazines or write for publications or have worked in some kind of journalistic reportery type of landscape. Um, John Green actually wrote for Booklist uh, before publishing his smash hit and debut novel, which was I think Looking for Alaska. Also mentioned him in that video that I mentioned. The third category is the TV, film, stage and entertainment category where roughly 12% of book deals happen. You know, these are writers, producers, screenplay people. And I actually read one book about a woman talking about her experience in the entertainment space. Her name is Patty Lynn. She's an award-winning TV writer. Highly recommend that book. I think it's called End Credits. It came out maybe a year or two ago. It was pretty good. About 9% come from the publishing industry itself, meaning like maybe there's, these are past editors, maybe these are, you know, editorial assistants. These are people who have worked in the publishing space themselves. And there's plenty of books that have done really well because a lot of these people already have those industry connections. The first one that comes to mind is Nita Prose, who wrote The Maid, a very, very successful book. The Other Black Girl by Zakaya Delilah Harris. I apologize if I mispronounced her name. She also worked in the book publishing space, so not really too surprising. About 3% of these deals within this time frame happened to be with uh, authors that were already self-published. So Colleen Hoover is probably the best, most uh, recognizable example of what can happen of someone who self-publishes a book that already has a lot of interest. One and a half ish percent uh, are content creators and influencers. I'm just going to throw out Josh Peck as an example. He published a book um, after he got out of Nickelodeon and, and Disney and all that because he was hanging out with a lot of famous, well-known content creator people for a while. So I'll just throw him into that category. And then there is a pretty large chunk of people that aren't necessarily accounted for. This is about 21% of people that belong in the not obvious category. These are counting people that don't necessarily have all of these big flashy awards or a ton of credibility or a ton of industry connections. These are just people who happen to make it. I'm, I'm really sorry to kind of say it like that, but I feel like getting into the industry, a lot of it is just preparation, it's planning, it's chance, it's networking. I just feel like it is so, it is hard to get into the book space as a writer or, or a professional. It, it, it's just hard, you know? It, it is possible to do it without, you know, a, a deep network of writing professionals. It is possible to do it without having all these credentials. I just think that this stuff kind of greases the wheels a little bit, sort of primes the pump. It makes it easier for you to have an introduction into that space. But this says that most writers, in fact, had thrown up a basic website. They might have recently started a Substack article after getting their book deal. So the people, as far as I understand, in this collection of seven categories didn't necessarily have a massive following before getting their book deal. I think that's where a lot of those like celebrity memoirs and stuff come from. But of the people who were on social media, it looked like Instagram was the most popular platform. And I don't have a link to this particular headline. I, I looked around, I did my absolute best, but everything was behind paywalls. So if you want me to take a deeper dive into this particular topic, definitely let me know.
Now for some of the smaller headlines, Apple cuts staff from Apple Books. Um, it looks like books are gonna be less of a focus for Apple going forward because it seems that there isn't as much money in it as they maybe thought. So if you wanna learn more about that, information's in the description. It looks like there are also changing trends when it comes to book covers. I've seen a lot of stuff about old timey animals so I guess that's a thing now. And also another uh, book cover design professional person out there believes that solid minimalist book covers will also become a thing. Information about that in the description down below. And then finally, a, uh, there was a Midwestern writer that examined issues of class in the literary community. Uh, Brandon North offers uh, an overview in this particular article in the description of what's been written in recent years about class, authorship, and money. I think all those are really, really great, important topics to cover, but really, that's all I have. I tried to make this as short, sweet, and accurate as possible, but like I said, some of the stuff I might have said might require more context, so please educate yourself if you want to learn more about that. I just want to respect your time, give you exactly what you need without taking up too much time. So that's all I have. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps other people discover the channel uh, who could also benefit from it, and that's all I have. I'll see you in the next video whenever that is. Take care until then. Bye.